Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Again, looking at the overview of the anatomy of the heart, we see the apex over towards the left, the base of the heart above, with the aorta ascending upward and to the left, and the pulmonary trunk adjacent to it. In the anterior interventricular septum is an excellent example of the anterior interventricular artery coming off as one of the major branches from the beginning of the aorta, behind this the pulmonary trunk to supply the heart wall musculature. Again, over to the right, we can see the oracle of the right atrium, and in this area, the superior vena cava. Now, in order to continue this dissection, And for demonstration purposes only, I'm going to remove the heart from the thoracic cavity so that we can look at these cardiac details more closely. The heart has been removed from the middle mediastinal area. And for orientation, once again, let's look at the ascending aorta, going to the arch, the pulmonary arterial trunk, around to the right side, the oracle of the right atrium, the superior vena cava passing downward. Turning the heart so that you're looking directly at the right side, I have opened the superior vena cava all the way down to the opening of the inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava passed upward in this direction, and as I indicated before, immediately empties into the right atrial uh, auricular area. The oracle is a small finger-like process turning towards the anterior heart. When the right oracle is opened, Inside, you will see that the surface is not smooth like that of the posterior atrial wall, but rather it has the small moth-eaten in appearance fibers called the pectinate muscles. Between the right atrium and the left atrium, on the opposite side, here undissected, is the atrial septum, separating one from another. And again now, reflecting the superior vena cava, and looking down, we can see this area of the atrial septum, the wall between the right and the left atrium. In addition to uh, these two openings coming down from above the superior vena cava, from below the inferior vena cava, we have the main, major drainage, venous drainage of the heart uh, coming into the right atrium. And that is this area here, very close to the opening of the inferior vena cava. This is the opening of the coronary sinus, a large area, large vein on the back of the heart, which is receiving all of the venous tributaries from the heart to eventually open and terminate here in the right atrium. Looking down into the heart then, in the depth of this area, we can see now the opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And filling this atrium are the valve flaps, the atrioventricular valves. 
and this is the right atrioventricular opening. Notice the close-up here now showing these pectinate muscles of the right auricle. In order for us then to study the ventricular anatomy, we should turn our attention primarily to the pulmonary arterial trunk and the pulmonary venous trunk posteriorly. This pulmonary arterial trunk leads from the right ventricle. So in order for us to open the right ventricle, we need to section, and I find it best to section through the anterior portion of this pulmonary trunk so that we can look down into it and get into the right ventricle. I'm going to cut the pulmonary arterial trunk horizontally so that we can better see the valves within it at the upper portion of the right ventricle. Here are the semilunar valves, the pulmonary semilunar valves. And you see, as the blood it would be passing from the ventricle towards you in the screen, these valve flaps would move out of the way for the upward passage of the blood to go to the lungs. However, when the ventricle relaxes, some of the blood will then, as it were, fall backwards in this tube. And when that happens, the blood will catch behind these valves and approximate these three valves completely closing off the opening. Continue then dissecting through this area, downward into the area of the right ventricle. Not infrequently in the heart, you will find semi-coalesced blood that should be removed in order to study the detailed anatomy more closely. In this specimen, the blood is completely enwrapped around the uh, various heart structures. And by carefully removing fragments of this blood, we will be able to see the detailed anatomy more closely. Once again, we're looking directly down on the anterior surface of the heart with the aorta ascending upward in the picture. And we have made the cut to reflect the right ventricular wall to look down into the depth of the right ventricle. Between this space, the right ventricle, and that of the left side is the interventricular septum a wall that partitions the right from the left ventricle. In addition to this, we have seen already from above the atrioventricular opening. And so now I will put my finger in through the right atrium. And now you can see it coming into the ventricle with some of the atrioventricular valve flaps covering the greater portion of the finger. In an overall view of the ventricle, we can see the ventricular wall musculature again has this appearance, a rough interior surface. These are the trabeculi carni muscles. In addition to that, we can see 
specific subdivisions of that. And here are minute muscles found in the depth of the ventricular floor from which these cord-like extensions are passing. This is a papillary muscle. And from it arise these very thin, small tendons that will be passing up to the valve flaps themselves. Now, we must remember that in the cardiac cycle, the right heart and left heart work simultaneously. The blood coming to the heart enters the right atrium, the blood from the lungs, the left atrium. It then passes downward into the ventricle, and it does so by contraction of the muscular walls of the atria and relaxation of the ventricular walls. So the blood really falls into the ventricles in a way because the uh, walls of the atrium, as you saw, were extremely small. But now when this ventricle contracts to force blood out through the pulmonary trunk to the heart, if these valve flaps were not attached somehow, they would just turn inside out and turn right up into the uh, atria. And in so doing, the blood would be forced back into the atria as well. So when this ventricular wall contracts, so does the small papillary muscles. When they contract, they tighten these cordotendinii fibers, preventing the valve from turning back and upward into the atrial area. The anatomy of the left side of the heart is similar. And in order to identify that anatomy, the easiest thing to do is cut through the aorta for this demonstration, for you follow the dissection guide instructions closely. A very good example of a major coronary arterial branch arising from the very base of this, the aorta. This artery is quite large, and it has an extensive blood supply along the whole anterior surface of the ventricular region. If one of these smaller terminal vessels becomes plugged, only a very small portion of the heart musculature will be affected. There is no collateral circulation to speak of in the heart. And so when this artery is plugged, this part of the heart musculature will die. And frequently, this is hardly even noticed by the individual. However, if the plug is back here, then this entire area of the heart will become necrotic. And needless to say, if it's all the way in this upper region that a plug would occur, a thrombus, an embolus, or fatty deposits finally plugging the artery, the entire anterior ventricular wall would be without a blood supply, the muscle would go into spasm, and the individual would immediately die. However, when we're out into this region, it is not uncommon that the heart muscle will become necrotic because of the uh, lack of blood supply. The individual will live, and as the necrosis is taking place in this area, fibrous connective tissue will grow in to replace it and more or less to act as a patch. It is hoped, of course, that this fibrous connective tissue growing into the area of the necrotic heart will keep pace with the necrosis, because if the necrosis exceeds it, the heart wall is extremely weakened and will rupture just by the contraction of the ventricular muscle itself. Looking once more at the exterior of the heart, we can see that there is truly no fiber direction to the ventricular wall musculature. Some of these fibers are almost running horizontally here. Others are running downward. And if one would do a meticulous dissection of this heart wall musculature, you would see that these fibers are literally wrapped around and spun around the heart 
so that when the heart muscle contracts, especially in the ventricles, there is not just a contraction squeezing the blood out in this direction, but it's more or less a ringing action when these muscles contract. Carrying our dissection then through the area of the aorta, the base of the aorta, we move down into the area of the left ventricle. Again, much dried blood is found in the aorta and is expected also to be found down into the ventricular area. The valve at the base of the aorta is semilunar, just like we saw at the base of the pulmonary arterial trunk. Valve flaps that when the blood passes downward after the left ventricle contracts, will slam the valves closed to cover this area. As we proceed with this cardiac dissection, needless to say, we will find an interventricular wall. Again, the corda tendinii attaching upward to the left atrioventricular valve flaps. And tracing these corda tendinii downward, we can see a fairly large muscle, the papillary muscle on this side. The anatomy, basically, of the right and the left heart the ventricular portion of it is identical, but there's one thing that we should look at here and notice the thickness of the left ventricular wall. And now when I turn the heart over to compare this, you will see that the wall is thinner. And leaving us again, look at this area, notice the thickness of the left ventricle and the relatively thinness of the right ventricle. The right ventricle only has to punch uh, the blood out to the lungs, whereas the left ventricle must push the blood throughout the entire body. This are then are the details that you should look at for your heart anatomy in order to adequately understand all of the portions, not only the exterior blood supply, but also the interior anatomy as well. Good illustrations in the textbook and the atlas on this, the cardiac dissection. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.